What's going on YouTubers? Another video, Catch Not Fish. Today I'm going to be showing you a simple DIY aquarium background solution that you can do that you would not honestly believe how to do this. Okay, so upon a lot of research on some of the best aquarium background options there are to use I decided to go with plastic dip. Now, this plastic dip is very versatile and it's actually very easy to apply to your aquarium. Now, this plastic dip is very affordable. This 55 gallon aquarium that I painted the backdrop with plastic drip only took one can and I believe this can was $5.79 from Lowe's. I'll include a picture of the actual product in the video, but you can get this product from Amazon, Lowe's, Home Depot, a number of, of uh, different retailers. I'm sure we are all aware on how to use spray paint, how to spray um, an application. So I did not record me actually spraying the back of the aquarium. But all I did, the prep work was, I just cleaned the glass with an alcohol-based cleaner. And I taped off the areas that I did not want paint um, to get on. And one thing I did not find online that I want to show you, instead of showing you painting it, I want to show you how the product dries when you remove, how removing it would be that easy. So for example, as you can see, it's a nice, hard, rubbery surface. And when you remove the tape, you can kind of see, you can kind of see the product as if you were removing it from the backdrop the back of the aquarium you see so for example let's say I use Rust-Oleum black paint and I painted it if I, if I needed to remove it for whatever reason if I wanted to change the color or if I did not want to have a aquarium painted with a black backdrop I would have to, I guess, use paint stripper or thinner or whatever you use to remove it. It'll be a long, hard drawn process. But based on research, you can simply just try to get a good grip on a corner and peel it off. Or you can even get some sort of a heat gun or blow dryer to make it kind of shrink so you can get a grip and just peel it directly off. So that's why, in my opinion, painting an aquarium, the backdrop option, the cheapest, simplest solution would be using plastic drip. Like I said, you can get it in black, I've seen it in gray, I have seen it in blue. So you can choose whatever color you want. So if you're even asking, well, why would I want to paint my aquarium? Why would I want to have a backdrop? Well, of course, painting an aquarium, it adds depth. So this is a simple 55 gallon aquarium. And as simple as adding that black drop, backdrop, it adds depth to the aquarium. And also for native tanks, it just helps the actual overall appeal of the tank, which I love. So you can see the difference in how this aquarium looks. And you see it, and if you take a look at the tanks here that I am going to paint, but you can see they're not painted. So this is an example of, hey, look how the tank looks without it painted. And this is how it looks painted with the black plastic drip. Okay, so Coincidentally, uh, 
one of the eastern mosquito fish has passed. And earlier today, I was having a conversation with my wife on fishing with uh, shrimp. And you can use, of course, dead shrimp. And live shrimp is sold by the dozen, which is more. And dead shrimp is sold by the pound. But the prices are soaring. It's off the chain. But I was just telling her the example of using live shrimp versus dead shrimp. Now, dead shrimp, of course, is going to catch fish always. For example, Virginia Kroger's, mangrove snappers, black drum, every now and again, um, red drum, um, channel catfish, a wide range of species. Well, live shrimp is going to catch the same, if not more, but certain species will not get a dead shrimp. So if you remember in my earlier videos, I stated how I have a passion for in fishermen. I grew up watching those shows and if you watch their shows, they use a lot of science in what they're talking about. And they have the science labs where they test the different baits, the different um, tackle and such because they have the tanks and such to do so. So I'm going to try to show this example to my wife even using a bluegill or warmouth how with a live eastern mosquito, mosquito fish let's see the reaction of the fish when I put it in there. Wow! So as soon as I put the fish the eastern mosquito fish in there, he was disoriented and he got nailed immediately. So this was the dead eastern mosquito fish in the holding tank. Let's see if he get nailed. Now, even if he does get nailed, let's see if he gets spit out. Now this is something that I have heard and read growing up my entire life. Sometimes fish will come up to a bait and put it in our mouth and they'll spit it out because they don't like the way it tastes, they don't like how it feels. For some reason they spit it out because for example, it's not a live bait, it's not a live shrimp. So this is the dead one, let's see what happens. Let's see if it gets spit out. <laughs> As you can see, they didn't even mess with it. They didn't. They, they're not even, see, okay, now, okay, see, they didn't even attack it when it, okay, as you can see, they didn't even attack it when it first entered the tank, and after some action with the, the filter caused it to draw their attention, they both pecked at it and see they're not even messed with it. Okay, well let's put another live one back in there. Let's put another live one in there and see what happens. Boom, there you go. <laughs> there you go. There is a difference between live bait versus dead bait. And in my opinion, live bait um, serves its purpose well. And I, I know some people say, oh, well, no, dead bait, it'll be bad. So to each their own. But if I had a choice, I guess you want to have live bait and dead bait to be uh, covered both, both ends. Okay, everyone. So I painted. This 55 gallon aquarium with a black backdrop. Now I'm gonna add water to it and set it back up and add fish to it. So I wanna show you what I use when I'm adding uh, fish to one of my tanks. The only product that I use um, dealing with water is API Stress Coat. This is the only product that I use. I use no other products. This product, it makes tap water safe. So it removes, for example, the chlorine from the water. So I'm gonna add the water to this tank and I'm just gonna put the correct amount into the water to make it safe so I can go ahead and add fish to it. 
and as you can see it it makes tap water safe as well as protects fish um, it helps reduce fish stress as well as replaces the slime coat now I also put a picture of this product in the video as well also if you're watching this video please please smash the like and subscribe to the channel so we can catch not fish Lift me up Okay, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna add water to the aquarium. I'm gonna make it safe to add fish. I'm gonna go outside into the ditch. If you have not watched the previous video on how I catch bait fish and such in the ditch, please check out that video. I'm sure you'll love it. And I'm gonna show you what I caught in one hour and add it to the tank. See what happened? All right, everyone. That's what I caught. And I actually did not stop until I caught 12 crayfish as well as the mosquito fish and there's some uh, golden top minnows in there as well. Alright guys, let's see if you got anything. I think I feel something too. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> All right, everyone, look, upon going to the ditch, the first thing I did was cast out this little dot beaming rod and reel out. I just put a little small piece of worm on it. And when I look back, I can already see that it was moved from where I cast it out in the ditch. And look what I caught. So driving along a normal highway, a road, a state road and you just see water you never know what could be swimming around this is directly off the side of North Main Street and this is a little small body of water all right so this is a quick DIY on how you can easily and cheaply paint an aquarium background uh, this tank I actually have some fat sleepers and some Johnny daughters and actually some mud minnows that I'm gonna put in this tank. Um, all the tanks that I have set up in my garage are native tanks. So the fish that I have in my tanks are native to the area that you live in. And um, 
really love it i really enjoy it so once again thanks for everyone's support and if you're not a subscriber please subscribe because i have a lot of um, um, thoughts a lot of motivation on this upcoming year's fishing adventure um, i've been working on my boat a lot i remember um, things that went wrong, things that could have put me in a better position to capitalize on the moment. Um, because anyone that fishes, if you're not ready, if you don't have the right tackle, the right bait, the right tie, the right weather conditions, you got to put everything together. That's what's going to make you catch fish. And that's why a lot of the videos I've been doing, uh, it's in February, the weather is all over the place, I've been working. A lot of um, DIYs that I do, it actually helps me hold bait to be prepared for when I'm going fishing to be able to catch fish. So, till next time, let's catch not fish.